Hey, we're here today with a Code Forces round. It's round 8.45. Um, let's get started. Okay, I already read this. I think I have to do. So it's just... You just count the number that are the same. Okay, and then, yep, I'm a little late, but that's all right. Let's move on to B. P with its reverse. Number of inversions in A, why would we do that? Isn't that just... What? Okay, that seems really silly. If you can count it with itself, then you're always going to get um, n times n minus 1. Submit. So the force is having problems. Even M2 is not working. M3 is working. Should I be submitting this again or is this going to go through? Submitted. Okay, I've already submitted. Cool. I assume it's proficient if AI mod t equals zero. The max difference between smartness is minimized. Oh, okay. So M. Okay. Yeah, and you can't. Yeah, yeah, you cannot have that many that you come. So. I think the 
What is the upper bound? What's the largest number of factors? Like 128 for a five-digit number? Okay. That's fine. That's not too bad. So we're gonna sort them. I think this is a, this covers it. Um, what happened? Oh, okay. yeah, we don't need to worry about it. Okay. Moving from D, get at one. I mean, after height of the tree steps, it all becomes zero. Okay, so, oh, okay, so. <sighs> okay, so what is. Yeah, okay, if I just pick a node and I think about it, think about that node. So it's itself, then it's XY, it's children, it's children's children.
Yeah, as long as it has somebody. So I think we're just computing the height of the node. All right, one, two, one, three. Two. Yeah, so it's like one plus one plus one plus two plus two plus three. Three plus four plus three. Which is ten, but why is it oh Is that some ten? So why are we? Oh, this is a one. Oh, this is a one. That's why it's a nine. Two two eight eight is is a one. Okay, yeah. This is the right intuition. So. It's rooted at one. Uh, I'm still gonna use. I'm still gonna use this, just out of convenience, more than anything else. Build, I guess it doesn't really matter. That's fine. And then now we need to calculate height. So for int x, we're gonna go through the reverse for us. Height x is one. Sum. We're going to take the height sum, and then the answer is basically it's just not, yeah. I think it's just that. And yeah, and then it's fifty fifty each time. All right. Problem E and problem F. Weighted to print. Everyone needs to be reachable from some network. Okay, the weight is kind of silly. There's just some ordering of the edges. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, can you buy an answer to an answer? So now you just have to answer the Boolean question. At least one node that can reach everyone else. So yeah, that's interesting. So reversing the edge is not converting it to be bidirectional, it's just reversing. So when, when would you want to reverse? You don't want to reverse this one. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know. Oh well. More salts on F than E. Six minutes, huh? That's a lot of renting. I should do this too. I store everything and then I store it and then remove the max.
Okay, yeah, if it's not weakly connected, it's negative one. If it is weakly connected, you can make some sort of tree, right? Like, ultimately, if you have this weird thing, you're making some sort of tree. Yeah, you're making some sort of tree. Oh, it's just when do you generate a spanning tree, right? Oh, but you get some edges. Oh, you get the edges for free if you don't. Well, for our purposes, these edges are bi-directional. <clears throat> yeah, so we, we kind of merge these and then, well, and then we see if the remaining So the reason it's just 20 because one, two, three, one, three. Yeah, if we just have three, four, then yeah, everything's reachable for one. So I mean, I think you just have a compressed graph. You want to check if in the compressed graph there's a node that each other node. Oh, it has to be. The first one. How, oh, how much code do I need to throw at this? It's the thing. I know what to do for a longer solution. I search SEC and follow them. That's it's a bit gross. Oh, 
Oh, you don't have the DFS. It's just does it have one source? Actually, if it's connected, yeah. If 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 you have a DAG that's weakly connected, oh, that's not. Oh, wait. it's not good enough. This is not a six minute solution though. Should we think more or should I just cook this? Um, yeah, I guess I can do this. Case templates. All right, case, all right, let's go.
process in zero, then we can represent one. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, then Now we build a directed graph, yes, where for as a super source. A new problem we can just solve from. I, mean, I think we're just going to do SEC. Hmm, it was kind of slow there. Yeah, I'm not really sure how this is a six minute problem. Anyway, uh, we still have problem F to do. Next, we're removing the max. So, I'm gonna find the max this. If you can do a dip conquer, you can iterate the smaller half. I think that is pretty good.
Yeah. Yeah, you just need to try for this segment of the prefix XOR. I wouldn't use that much runtime. Try for this segment. Well, you just have a try where you have a sorted list and you can binary search that list. This is a lot of blocks. I think this is like, ugh, I think this is like three logs. So Yeah, I have a three log solution. It's a three log solution. If I use persistent try, it's a two log solution. Not that happy with this. Memory won't exceed. Pass are not getting close to the eight second mark. I realize 1024, so maybe the intention is the double log and then. Was one hundred twenty one. Okay. Yeah, we have eight. Let's take that one.
Oh, we can just, we don't need percent, we can just sort. Sort by the other range. Okay. Okay, I think we've got it. Yeah, but this is a log squared. Wait, what? How is this working? I see. Okay, this high spits. I'm not gonna do this high spit. It's just gonna do this. Uh, we're not doing this anymore. We're not even oh, we just have, we have a bio chart and we have it's like moon index. That's what we're looking for. Word shift down the fit and what? This is just add. 
Okay. One. Oh, my comedy here, forgot. I can just call this so I don't even need to name it. Okay, so we have that. These are these are inclusive ranges, which maybe means we should increase by one. We want to reverse sort. Them. I think we want to reverse sort them. Yeah, we're doing min index. It's n times bits, right?
Click 20 times that is sufficient. But also, we can just reallocate, it's probably fine. Okay, now we go through the queries. We, we want to include This is fine actually, we can do this. We have quick sort I. Target um, target and That is the entire problem. I'm not going to pop that Okay, fine. Really? Really, 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 really. Should I submit this? I test it. Uh, let me just submit it.
Can I use him? I did use him. Okay. Long screw. That's pretty fast. Okay, cool. Let's talk about these problems real quick. So, um, problem A, you want your array, an array is good if every adjacent pair of elements have different parity, so one is even and one is odd. Um, you're given an array, you can do this operation. Select any pair of adjacent elements where both are the same parity, delete them, and then replace them with their product. And then we want the min number of operations to form a good array. So this, this thing is kind of silly. It's just basically um, the product of two even numbers is even. The product of two odd numbers is odd. So it just it's kind of like deleting one. So it, we can kind of just delete one number, and we want to do the minimum number of times to make a good array. And well, then you know it's just the number of consecutive pairs that are the same because every pair that's the same, we got to delete one of them. So we can think about it as ones and zeros, right? Um, there's four zeros in a row here, so we need to delete three of them. There's two ones in a row here, so we need to delete one of them, and then we get a good array. Um, so we're just counting how many pairs are the same. So just add that up, and you're good. So that's A, pretty simple. Um, problem B. Right, okay, problem B, it's kind of silly. We're counting inversions, um, but we're taking a permutation and concatenating with itself. So what happens when you take a uh, permutation and you can it with itself. Well, in terms of inversions, for every pair of numbers here, for example, two and four, they're either gonna have an inversion in this half or they're gonna have an inversion in this half because they're, the order is flipped. Uh, inversion means that a bigger number comes before a smaller number. So there's, there's two types of inversions. The inversions that are within each half and the inversions that cross each half. So inversions that cross the two halves, um, there's going to be n times n minus one of them because you just pick any pair of different numbers and it will definitely happen because there's definitely a four here and there's definitely a three here, for example, if you pick the pair four, three. And then within each, every pair also shows up once. It'll either show up here or it'll show up here and not both. So the answer is just, um, sorry, did I, say, I meant to say n choose two uh, earlier. So we have n choose two plus n choose two. Uh, which is n times n minus 1. And you need to add this up over every single permutation, which is kind of silly. We just multiply by n factorial. So I just take n factorial, multiply by n, and n minus 1. And that's the answer. All right, that's b. Problem c, what was this? Ah, uh, yes, okay. So ai is the smartness of the ith student, and there's m topics 1 through m. Um, I, the ith student is proficient in topic t if ai mod t is zero, uh, and we want the we want to get a team of students with the smallest difference um, between the max and min smartness, so that uh, the team is proficient in every topic. So at least one student on the team covers that topic. Okay, so what we do here basically we sort the a's because we want to you know check the min and max, and we do this like two-pointer sweep on the A values, and we just need to answer, um, we, we, we add students and remove students, we need to answer, do we have enough to cover every topic? And the way I do that, I just track the coverage for every topic, um, and then I just make adjustments to that coverage array. So I count how many, I'm always counting how many students are covering every topic, 
And then the main thing here is we need to factor the numbers. So because the numbers are up to 10 to the fifth, um, we can actually iterate through all of their factors. There aren't that many factors. Um, I think it was on the order of 100 at most. And so we can just iterate through all these factors, um, change those coverage values. And then, uh, yeah, we just do our usual two-pointer sweep. Um, we keep going until we're covered or we reach the end. And if we're covered, then we consider this as a candidate and check um, our min. And then otherwise we remove our i. So, so we're taking i and j and we're like sliding j for each i and then i goes forward one at a time as well. Um, yes, that's it. So basically it's the runtime is like 10 to the fifth times 100, which is 10 to the seventh, which is not too big. All right, that's C, now D. Yeah, okay, so problem D. Um, what you need to realize is that this XOR of the children idea, basically, for if you think about a node, so for example, um, their tree here, you think about this node, and the first second, it'll just be itself. In the second second, it'll be these two XOR. In the third, it'll be these three XOR, right? Because that's how it, it happens. Everything like slides up. Every value kind of slides up one at a time. And then in the fourth second, it'll be zero. And then fifth, sixth, and so on, it'll always be zero. Um, and then if we're looking at all two to the end configurations, basically what that means is this node has a 50-50 chance of being zero versus one the first three seconds. And then after that, it'll always be zero. Um, so we, we're actually just calculating the height of every node. The height of every node tells us how long we are 50-50 to be a one. After that, we're always zero. And then we just add that up. So we're actually just adding up all the heights, uh, multiplying by two to the n, and then multiplying by half, because that's our probability of being one each of those times. So that's what I do here. I just build the tree, and then I compute the height of every node. The height of a leaf is one. Um, the height of anything else is the max of the height of its children, plus one. And then I just add up the heights, multiply by, in this case, two to the n minus one, because I mentioned you multiply by two to the n, then you multiply by half. All right, that's D. Um, problem E. Um, I'm not sure if there might be something a little simpler than what I did, but what I did, it wasn't too bad. Um, so basically, we want to know what's the max edge weight reversal we need to do in a directed graph in order to set up at least one node that can reach every other node. Um, so I do a binary search on the edge weights. And now I convert this to a Boolean problem. If I can reverse every node up to this, can I make it make that node? I'm calling that node a super source because it can reach every point. Um, and so the idea is basically now you have a directed graph, and you want to answer given a directed graph, is there a super source? The reason for that is when you have this cutoff that you're searching, um, basically all edges below the cutoff you can build a graph where that edge goes both ways. And then for the edges that are above the cutoff, they can only go one way. So what that means is both ways, basically I just add the directed edge AB and the directed edge BA to the graph. Uh, the reason I can do that is if there's a super source, there's essentially there's a tree rooted at the super source. And so with these like edges that you can go either way, you're, you're never gonna use both directions. So you can just um, put them both in because you're only going to end up picking one. Um, okay, and so now you need to answer, given a directed graph, is there a super source? Um, maybe there's a simple way to do this, but the way I do it is I find the SEC's strong connected components, and then that turns the graph into a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. And then the question in the DAG actually boils down to just, is there only one source in the DAG, as in, is there only one node in the DAG where um, there are no in edges? If there are two or more nodes where there are no in edges, obviously there's no super source. If there's one, then it has to be a super source because um, essentially you can, you can prove it. Um, everything has to um, be pointed at from something. So there's always a way to get there from the super source. Um, yeah, so you need the SEC algorithm for this idea. Um, but it's not too bad, ultimately. You just binary search, uh, build the new graph, and then run SEC, check for your super source. 
Okay, last problem, problem F. Um, so for this problem, you take a subarray and you can, you would take the uh, XOR of every value in the subarray, but you remove the max. And you want to find the maximum of this operation over every subarray. Okay, so we can do a little divide and conquer. The divide and conquer starts for the full array, 0n, and it always finds the maximum index. And then based on that, we're going to we're gonna compute the answer for every subarray crossing this maximum. Um, and what that means is if you have some array, right, these are pretend these are numbers and you have max and pretend these are numbers. What that means is the start of your subarray is somewhere in here and the end of your subarray is somewhere in here. Um, and then once you compute that answer, then you recurse on this subarray and then you recurse on this subarray because we've already covered everything that crosses here. So that's the div conquer idea. Um, we use RMQ to get the max quickly. Um, the thing is this can be, this div conquer can be um, non-balanced. Like it, it's, it has the same problem as quicksort um, where you can end up dividing it at a near end point every time. Um, so the next key idea is instead of doing it like O of N work per instance, of uh, max index and crossing question. Um, what we're going to do, uh, I should have kept that. The way that we handle very imbalanced cases is we we actually can manage to do an algorithm where instead of doing O of N work, we can do uh, a loop over this many nodes, not nodes, this many elements, or a loop over this many elements. So essentially, we can pick the shorter half and we can iterate over that half and then answer the question. Um, and then if you use that as your algorithm, you can prove that the div conquer becomes n log n instead of n squared. Um, and then the key question is, how do we answer these queries? Well, the query is, um, it's kind of like, okay, if the subarray starts in this range and ends in this range, what is the max x1? Keeping in mind that we have to remove the max index. Um, and so that's the main query. Um, this is the this is the making sure we iterate the shorter side. So to solve these queries, what I do is I find all the previous XORs, I put um, I sort the queries by the non-iterated start point, and then basically I the sort is so that I can do this um, I can add to the try so I make a try the sort is so that I can add to the try in a specific order, and then. I'm iterating over the um, smaller range. And then we know the kind of target we're looking for, right? Because we want, if we take our subarray, it's prefix XOR of start, XOR of prefix XOR of end, XOR of that max value. And so if we have one of those two prefix XORs and you have the max value, we kind of, and we want to maximize the results, we kind of know what we're looking for. Like we have the tar, basically here we have a target, which is two of those XOR. And then we want to make this value maximum. So we want to make the highest bits different from this, if possible. And so that's something I support with my try. Um, the try can do a query max on the target. And then the other key thing is this, uh, we need to care about the end one endpoint. The way we do that is we're inserting into the try in decreasing order. We track the min index for every node. And that way we know if, if we go to a node and the min index is too big, Right, we check it every time. If it's too big, that means that uh, there's nothing in this subtree of the try that covers this start one, end one range. Um, yeah, so that's my idea for F. Um, let's see how how this looks. Like. Oh, I got passed into sixth place. Looks like. Um, but yeah, overall this, well, looks like promise is pretty hard, uh, but overall the distribution looks, I would say decent. Um, I think, uh, I think this was kind of a funny set of problems though. There was a, there were a lot of things where you needed to like kind of decode their, uh, idea. For example, this one, the product thing, oh, actually it's just deleting an element. 
for this one, oh, actually the, the count is gonna be the same for every permutation, no matter what permutation it is. Um, this one, this one is factoring two pointer. This one, yeah, a couple like hidden things here as well, uh, but it ends up being uh, pretty simple once you figure out the kind of all the clues. So yeah, definitely a lot of just like um, problems where you think about it and then it becomes pretty simple once you make the right observations. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. Um, I'm going to grab some food. I will see you all in the next one.